Welcome. Why is a university from the East Coast in the West Coast, in Seattle? Taylor Washburn is Dean and CEO of Northeastern University Seattle, joins us. Good to see you. Good to see you, Good Steve. to talk to you again. Indeed. Uh, you went from being a lawyer and an activist to being a dean of a college that uh, is on the East Coast. Why are you here? I'm here because as a lawyer and activist, I, th I strongly feel that the greatest potential weakness of our region is in education, whether it's K-12, community college, or higher ed. We simply produce a lot less of the people in this state that, we, that our companies need. Northeastern presented me with an opportunity to try and fill that gap at the higher le ed level, and I jumped at it. What's, what, so in particular to Northeastern, what's the gap that they are filling? What are the programs sure. that they're looking at? Um, what the companies in a whole bunch of sectors in this region uh, need is, in addition to undergraduates, is folks with specialized graduate experience in STEM fields, computer science, uh, education, et cetera. What Northeastern is bringing is, for, at the graduate level only, approximately 30 degrees delivered in both an online and hybrid format in those fields where the need is. So the, the result of that will be, as a state, we're producing more of the graduates here that our companies need, and that's a good thing. Why didn't the schools that were here fill that gap? Well. This state has a lot of good schools. And a large number of them are public, and as we all know in the last, well, periodically, but especially in the last 10 years, the funding simply gone down. Nonprofit colleges such as Northeastern, who are in the business of trying to meet the same need, uh, that's, that's a gap that they can fill, or at least try and fill, and that's what we're doing here. You guys are near or partnered with Connected to South Lake Union. Correct. What's the connection? Uh, Northeastern is here to train uh, working professionals and others in STEM fields. In this region, the most innovative, the, the location where the most innovative companies are is South Lake Union. Uh, big data, cloud computing, you name it. Uh, it's a logical place to be. It's where our students are, and on the research end, as we start to develop more research relationships, it's where the brightest minds are. It's where your students are? Are you drawing students from the, the businesses to get their advanced degrees? Yeah, we have essentially three types of students, or three areas from which they come. One are working professionals, folks in their 20s, 30s, and 40s who want to advance or in some cases switch their focus. And a uh, number of those are from South Lake Union in Seattle. Hmm. What, what are the partnerships, you, what are the specific partnerships you have between Northeastern and the South Lake and Union companies? Um, let's think. Uh, I'd say it, it depends how we describe the term partnership, but um, I think research relationship, the first one that comes to mind is the uh, Seattle Biomed. Seattle Biomed, as, as we know, is one of the world leaders in researching neglected tropical diseases and figuring out maybe how to fix it. Northeastern is actually a national leader in what's called drug discovery, which is how do you put that in medical form? So we are working with Ken Stewart, the former CEO, on I think about two neglected diseases to take his research product and figure out how to put it in a medical form that can be distributed. So that's a research partnership. Um, we are working not in the immediate South Lake Union area. Well, the Gates Foundation is working with us in Shoreline College on what something called adaptive learning, which is traditional problem in any classroom is if you're really smart and the guy next to you is a little slower, how does the teacher handle that? Well, we're using technology uh, to try and narrow, the, narrow, make the teacher's job easier and allow both students to learn at a better rate than, than earlier. It's very pioneering stuff and we're trying it out at Shoreline. What does it look like? Uh, well, it looks like a uh, basically a curriculum product and broken down into learning units and students go at different rates and the, the traditional problem of the smart person sitting there twiddling their thumbs uh, is lowered uh, and it's still in test pilot stage. But that's, that's exactly the kind of stuff that our campus exists for is pushing the envelope. Uh, another type of partnership we've done with a number of technology companies and gaming companies 
is an initiative we call GAMES. We're tackling the issue of why do so many girls at grade five love STEM and science, by the time they get to grade nine, there's a precipitous drop. So our, our technical computer science fields, very low percentage. We are uh, working with gaming folks and educators across the country to develop online games, which will not teach those middle school girls STEM, but will inspire them to want to get into STEM. Nobody's doing that, and so we're working with, starting to work with a bunch of other universities and gaming experts to develop the games and then distribute them. Any, do you have an idea what they look like, what those games are like? Not yet. That, this, is, you know, this is not simple. It'll take about two years. It has multiple steps. We, we have research. Uh, there is research that we're, we're collecting on what, are the, what interests girls in online games and what, kind, what features do you have to have, but this will be a multiple step uh, program. So I um, have some kids and they went through college mm -hmm. and they took online courses and in-class courses and hybrid courses. Mm -hmm. oh, and, and they did not like the online courses that were exclusively online because mm -hmm. they felt disassociated from their fellow students mm -hmm. and not connected to mm -hmm. you know the institution that gives mm -hmm. part of what going to college is all about. Sure. So how is Northeastern answering that kind of critique? Well. Not all students have the luxury of going to an on-ground university. And in fact, in today's world, very few do, especially if they're holding jobs. Uh, secondly, there are all different types of quality online programs. I mean, there's some really not very impressive ones, and some folks who've been doing it for a while have picked up a lot of techniques to engage the learners. And actually, according to really most studies, get the content across just as well. But your point with your children is, is essentially what we've discovered, which is even if a good online program is, is helping them get the content down, most people really enjoy a person-to-person -person component. And that's what we call hybrid learning. And that is essentially what our campus exists to deliver, is, is both the online content in any of our graduate degrees, but at nights or on weekends, come to the campus for the personal interaction, which in uh, many areas is, is helps a lot and students clearly value. Where, what does the campus look like? Because when you say campus, I think of the UW yeah, or Seattle right, Union. Right, right. But it's not right. like that. No, it's not like that. And you know, uh, what I love about Northeastern is they are pushing the envelope. The traditional large on-ground campus uh, is wonderful, but in many cases, it's going to become a thing of the past. Because Our, of cost, or because we're yeah, the cost, access, lots of uh, lots of reasons. Uh, online education worldwide is clearly going to be a major component in the future, without any question. Our hybrid campus, which is uh, really the the administrative offices, are only two thousand square feet. We have three large uh, classrooms. We're in the process of getting two more campuses because we're, we're growing so fast. Uh, but it's a small footprint and frankly that is all you need. So from a, uh, from a school standpoint, a whole lot less overhead and you can put your resources into the product, not the, not the land and the buildings. So when you, when you came here and uh, filled this niche, did uh, the UW or Shoreline, did they did they complain or did they say, oh, here's another partner, we can save some money on capital infrastructure by partnering with them? Much more the latter. I really have, neither I nor any of my team have gotten any uh, negative feedback. I think everyone in this state recognizes that the state needs more educate, education. Uh, so we have, I, I know a lot of the folks at both those institutions and really it's much more of a how can we work together to learn from each other and, and there are things to learn both ways to collaborate like we're doing with Shoreline and to help the state as a result. So it's, I, competition is really not in my vocabulary. Does Northeastern start to see itself as a Northwestern college? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I, a key premise of our president is that any university, whether it's Northeastern, in, which is in a community, it's, uh, one of its top priorities must be to establish a real 
social compact with the community. So for me, because I've been active in this community for years, uh, that, that was a natural. So we spend a lot of our time outside of classes trying to identify issues of importance to the community, convening folks, inviting the University of Washington and others, and coming up with solutions so that in pretty short order, in a number of fields, we're definitely part of the community. What does it look like five years from now, 10 years Well, from now? that's an interesting question because it's two years now and starting next spring we will have three campuses all within two blocks of each other in South Lake Union. So my, I guess my vision is we will have somewhere probably north of 500 to 1,000 students. We're not interested in becoming a mega university but providing really good education that we will be developing uh, uh, valuable research relationships with various members of our community, both nonprofit and, and corporations, that we will be contributing a lot of thought leadership and solutions to some of the issues we have as a community, and uh, we'll just be another member of the community. You know, you've been integrated into this community a long time, politically, mm -hmm. uh, and, and in, in terms of professional life. Um, what, what, why was this the, the next act for you? Well, um, I think I had spent many decades in the field of law, enjoyed it, had a lot of good experiences, but was ready for something new. And the challenge of being the first employee of a university on a third floor cubby and creating a brand new university, that just interested me. <laughs> that, that, that was, you know, I figured I'd learn a lot, I certainly have. I felt very important, I didn't do this really for any personal reason, but I do feel the region needs several more universities. I mean, Boston, for example, has 10 major universities. It's a good thing for any region. And I thought, th I, I, I love education, I used to be a teacher, I have a master's in education, I thought I can do this. You know, Boston has a comparable popul population, but they're surrounded by a much bigger population right. group. Can we sustain and support more universities? Uh, without any question. I really? mean, uh, without any question, and, if, and, and the, the numbers tell the story. If you look at the number of, uh, whether it's undergraduates in these fields or graduates, the demand is intense. Currently, most companies have to spend a ton of money importing these folks from around the country or the world. It'll be a long time till we, in domestically, produce anything close to what's needed. So that would be the least of my concerns. What about instructors? You have instructors on the East Coast. Right. Instructors here too that are starting to be integrated into that campus? Yeah, this is what's really cool about our Northeastern Seattle campus is we get the, we get the high quality uh, programs offered at our Boston campus complemented. Let's take computer science for example. We have folks who come in and teach or, or co-teach from Google, from Amazon, from Twitter, from Facebook, and they, they talk to our students about here's what we're doing last week. And if you know anything about technology, it moves very quickly. So any school has difficulty keeping its product current with what the companies actually need. We're able to minimize that, and to me, that's, to me and the students, that's very exciting. Taylor Washburn is Dean and CEO of Northeastern University in Seattle. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, folks.